where best to talk about an alpine butterfly than in the alpine? If you can guess where my stock footage is on this green screen, put that in the comments and see if you can guess where I'm at. So the alpine butterfly is a midline knot, which means you tie it in the middle of your line. You don't want to necessarily tie it on near the end because, well, you'll see in the break test. It could possibly slip and that's not really where it shines but it doesn't deform if you pull it this way or if you pull it this way. So if it's hanging here and you want to pull down, that's great. Or if you're trying to pull something down there up, this is a great knot to do that with. What's also really cool about this is like the bolin, it's super easy to untie. You take the collars or the wings of the Alpine butterfly knot and it cracks pretty easily. You break that and pretty soon it's pretty easy to untie. And we tested this actually to a thousand pounds of force or 4.4 kilonewtons. It's interesting, it's not as centered as I thought it would be. Um, these, this doesn't seem to be pulled as much. This moved a little bit more. Let's see if I can untie this after it's been loaded to a thousand. Oh, this is actually quite easy to untie and relax and put it back to kind of where it was. This is probably one of the easiest knots I've done so far after it's been loaded to that much. Let's take it to eight kilonewtons and see what happens. Yeah, it just looks a lot tighter. It's currently at 7.3, pulled it up to 8.8. .8. So after 2,000 pounds of force, I can get one wing off quite easy, the second wing off quite easy. And once that's relaxed, the rest of the knot seems to follow. This isn't crossed over anymore. Before it had this natural twist in it and it was going around this way and then looping through. And now it seems to not be that way at all. Now the history of this is pretty funny. 1902 is when this was originally drawn by Henry Bushby. Now remember this stuff. It didn't really have a name. Then in 1914, it had Lineman's Writer. And then 1928, it was published in the British Alpine Journal and named Butterfly Knot. And in the King Ashley's Bible, I mean the Ashley Book of Knots, in 1944, it was called the Lineman's Loop. That's number 1053. And if you look at number 1053, J.M. Drew was the first to publish this knot. It's funny we think this stuff was invented in the 1900s when ropes have been around for, what, 10,000 years. And it's gone through several name iterations. And if you stay till the end, I'll tell you a name that will never let you see this knot the same again. Now this is timestamp below if you want to skip to the break test, but they're all kind of intermingled in how you tie this because that kind of matters. If you wrap it around your hand three times and you reach under this strand, you can pull this guy out and put it over here. And now you have the loop of the butterfly. Pull that down, pull this over. And you have to make sure that it has wing on this side, wing on this side, so same side. You have, this is parallel and this is crossed. And that's how you know you've got it right. So everything is interlinked. Instant replay is to wrap it around your hand three times, reach under this guy, grab the middle one, bring it around, stick it underneath all of them and that is how you interlock those two sides wings on that side parallel crisscrossed if you're ever going to trust your life to something like this make sure you take at least 10 minutes and practice this ideally while you're either watching this or right afterwards when you're done wiping i mean hitting the white button the like button so i struggle to remember which strand to grab you know and like all that and what really kind of helped me understand this knot is you twist it once twist it twice and you have this loop right here. And this loop, you can now go in either direction where you go under itself and you keep that loop right there and you can stick it in there. And you can see how this is interlinked and this is interlinked, creating that loop. If you study it for a second, you'll understand how this is formed, which we'll go into in a second. Crisscrossed, those are parallel, collars are on the outside. Twist once, hold that there, twist twice, that's your hole that you're going to be going into later. And you can go in either direction. I'm going to go this way. And go right there. And now you have it parallel, crisscrossed, and the wings are on the same side of the strand. How strong is the alpine butterfly, you ask? Well, knots in general will reduce the strength of a rope 50% of the best case scenario a rope can get, which is tested by using a big bollard, for example, where they wrap it around this uh, object that's multiple diameters bigger, 
and it gets pulled, pulled, pulled until it breaks. But as soon as you put a knot in it and you get all these tight bends in this thing, it's going to reduce the strength down across the board 50%. If you tie a knot in like high tech core that's super static, because this is dynamic and can take the flexing a little bit, it can reduce it down 70%. So when we pulled this, we're putting eights on either end of the rope because that's what I always do. And we're pulling to see if the eight breaks first or if the butterfly breaks. Oh, this is a very interesting result. It usually breaks in the end knot. It's very plasticky feeling. It's very melted in here. All right, so we have a Sharpie mark here, a Sharpie mark here, and a Sharpie mark here. Peak force was 16.23, which is pretty low. I usually get in that 18 range. 17 to 19 is what I usually get. It didn't slip. It's starting to fall apart here because this is part of it. What? No. So let's try one more time with something in there. starting to slip now. Well, that thing is glazed and I could see it tearing while it was happening. Um, this is part of the butterfly. This strand was going around and through. So having something there obviously helps. The other side, it's a, it's a little bit lower. I usually don't get this low of results when I'm just doing uh, eight to eight on this rope. So I am going to conclude that I'm getting lower results having an alpine butterfly in there when you're pulling end to end and the knot is just in the middle, whether or not something's in the middle of it. But the whole reason you tie a butterfly is so you can clip something to it. What happens if we clip the butterfly and pull with it with an eight on the end? So we have an eight that's going to a butterfly. And once you clip into that, you are loading this strand and this is your tail, which goes basically infinitely long into my bag and I put a sharpie here on the end and a sharpie here and a sharpie here and we will see broke on this eight. This one here got sucked into the knot because I believe it was in that range. Well, it, that's full strength right there. 18.55. Full knot strength, I should say. So this is at 10 and a half kilonewtons and then this was at 15 kilonewtons and it finally broke at 18.55. Uh, it doesn't really matter the strength of a knot as long as you're maintaining most of it. What's really cool about this is it doesn't deform when you're using it and it's easy to untie. So there's benefits to using this. You don't want to just use the strongest knot possible because like that's not always what you need. I need that when I'm pull testing things or rigging giant things that are not normal. But it's also nice to have a knot that I can go whoosh. That's the noise a knot makes when you untie it. So we know it's super strong enough and we know it's easy to untie. The problem with knots that are easy to untie is they untie easy. And so the bowline, for example, needs to be backed up. But there's something you should know about this knot. Not saying that you shouldn't use it for even some of the applications it's used for, but understand that if you pull it and it slips, it will undo itself. We're going to do that again. I put some Sharpie marks here. You can examine where they're at and look at my knot. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, it didn't break. All right, so there is our left Sharpie. There is our right Sharpie. And this was the loop of our butterfly, but this part is damaged and very, very hot after uh, the game pulled through. So I think that is what's caused the previous break. That's pretty low at 11.73. And it's interesting how the graph did that. 
Now, of course, if something is in the eye, like a carabiner, it's not going to do that, which it's nice to know if you are going to use it as a bend. A bend is if you take two separate ropes and you tie a butterfly, which you can wrap it three times around your hand if you want to keep it simple. Grab the two pieces and slip it under there. And if you join two ropes with a butterfly and your tails are too short, then it could come undone. If that might kill you. Five mil 12 braid Dyneema to demonstrate what happens when things slip. Two, three, oh, four. Oh, look at that. Look at that, guys. Oh, four. that is. That is what you call a slip knot. Oh, that's really hot. And that's what the graph looks like while it's doing it. Looks like Bitcoin. Another normal butterfly. Half, one. That's the coolest result. Ooh, it disappeared. It disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's nine, at least with this rope. Oh, yeah. 2.36. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, yeah. This is like the fourth time we've done that now. <laughs> 2.88. Yeah, it's just slipping in the twos and then goes up to almost three. Now, something I see this used for more often than not is when there's a core shot or a damage on the rope. Then what you do is you put the damage right there, you reach under, and you isolate it so the rope that you have to repel or ascend is bomber, and the dangerous part is left out of the system. But if this also gets sucked through, you have the core shot, back into the party like just like that anyways now this is more likely to happen with a super cord or a six millimeter high strength tech high tech cord and some ropes are now made out of dyneema sheath and dyneema core so they're naturally slipperier ropes and if you try to tie this knot in it to isolate a problem it might come undone oh no there's a core shot we should isolate it with a butterfly <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's find out what that does. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. Oh, it slips at nine. Uh oh, our core shot. Oh no. Oh no. Those cave scissors, they'll get you. Yeah. <laughs> So this is how I was taught to isolate a knot. You still tie your butterfly, but you put in it, put on a huge bite so you can tie an overhand knot. So this allows you to clip a cow's tail on to be able to actually pass this big knot that's in your, yeah. in your line. Because you either need to move your crawl and ascender up and over the knot or your descender below the knot. And by clipping here, you've isolated and given yourself a loop to tie onto while the damage is out of the way. Eight, nine, yep. 10, 11, yep, starting to slip. It knew there was a knot in there, and so it was afraid to even try to get close to it. Broken the butterfly. If your fixed rope had a butterfly part the way down and you wanted to have a part you could clip because you have a core shot here, and that's how you're gonna pull it, because you're gonna pull like that. One, two, Oh, it was doing EDK things where it was kind of collapsing or like rolling, but it actually broke in the butterfly. Wow. And basically we got butterfly strength. No, we got 18. Yeah, we got high butterfly strength. A really cool bonus test is we got our hands on some fixed ropes from the death slabs of Half Dome that were completely weathered. But not only that, they have core shots. 
not only just one core shot, but two core shots sometimes within the same butterfly. So these ropes are old, fuzzy, and worn. So friction is playing a huge role in these things when they broke lower. Oh, that's good. still alive oh my god oh that was good oh that was amazing ah <laughs> that is not very high it's strong enough to ascend which is all people do on that second test has a figure eight whatever you want to call this thing it was a butterfly oh no i don't even know if it was that and a clove hitch because i didn't have enough tail that's what the eight is doing. Oh, that's what that's doing. Oh, that's gonna go. Oh, we got a higher result. 8.72 with a fun graph to go with it. So it was nice to see that the Alpine butterfly did its job of isolating the problem but it's also concerning how low that thing broke. Ironically, it's still a five to one safety ratio when you're ascending the thing, uh, except if it's still rubbing the spots that are worn. Now the Alpine butterfly follow through is where you can actually put it in something that doesn't open. I don't have anything, I just have a carabiner. Pretend this doesn't open. You take an overhand knot, super easy knot, run it through that thing and that is your loop. And so you just have to basically create another overhand knot in order to make the rest of the alpine. You can see like up to this point, it looks pretty easy. What you do is you go behind the thing and you have to put it through two of them or you're gonna have a nothing burger. Put it through there. And do I have my wings on the same side? Yes, I do. And do I have it crisscrossed here? Yes, I do. And it is parallel. And that is how you put it in something. Now it's a midline knot, not an end knot. You don't necessarily want on the end of your rope, but um, that's how you do a follow through. Now, if you're doing a follow through and it's not going the way you want, it is possibly because you're doing the first overhand, not wrong, but you need to do the next overhand opposite. So when you put this thing through here, you want to come around the top, open that up, put it through both. And what can happen is you have this wing on this side and this wing is behind it. And that's because my overhands are not opposite. What happens if you do this? Well, we tested that. One wing is on this side and one wing is on the back side. I'd like to point out that this thing keeps rotating into being straight instead of the loop whenever we're doing this. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. And that looks like a butterfly with a very small eye. <laughs> it's just hard for this to go through because that it has, you know, a, it's, it's, it's a bite. We've got a 12 kilonewtons here and then 14, 14 and a broke. I'm pulling the butterfly. This is the, that's what we cut. That's what broke and it's melted. I think our eight is weaker than an improper tide butterfly. You know, a lot of knot people are gonna be upset about the fact these things, I don't wanna say it. Now this is not an alpine butterfly. It is literally tied wrong, except in a box number, a box number 1452, the name is another original bin that is easily untied as 1451. It appears to be strong, secure, and compact. It might be super good enough, but if you're gonna try tying an Alpine butterfly, do it right. Now, another way that can be done wrong is if you turn it this way and then turn it this way, you still get that loop in the middle and then you have to make a funny face. Keep that eye. What you have here is this is parallel and this is parallel, meaning they're not interlocked. 
which means you can separate it, which means it has a risk of being able to pull off and then you have a slip knot. So we tested this as well. They're basically not interlinked and it is um, basically not even a knot. And so we're gonna pull uh, ugly undress figure eight to this and to see if it fails. But it held, I mean, albeit it held. I'm not saying do it wrong. I'm just saying that's good to know you're not like super gonna die, I guess. And so it looks like a Alpine butterfly if you're not paying attention. And we just got two, two quick eights on the end. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, slip baby, slip. Come on, don't break full strength. Stop it. Stop. There we go. Thank God. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad to know that this stuff is not as bad as they it looked really it looked like a slip knot. 10 kilonewtons started to slip, but uh, it couldn't get the bite through easily enough. And so that's why we got up to 15.5. I definitely wouldn't want to be jugging on something like this if this was like a critical thing that needed to be in there. But it is nice to know that if you are grabbing the eye, that it's super good enough. Now, I wonder if we pulled end to end. Yeah, that's just a, that's a wonky knot. Don't do that. We ended up testing ring loading, which is where you take the ring and you load it. Now, sometimes people don't realize that if you pull in something in a loop, that it gets almost 200% of whatever you were getting straight. Not always 200%. There's always some reduction somewhere. Turn on the scienceometer. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that is interesting. What is going on here? So this was the end of our rope. This was our butterfly. Looks like it broke where this carabiner was. Neato, but it was just collapsing around 20 and then went all the way to 28. Examine those butterflies. We're gonna load it that way. And this one I'm gonna clip here and we're gonna load it that way. Oh, that's so interesting. I would not identify that as a butterfly if I walked up to it. <laughs> Broken rope footage, blah, blah, blah. Nine, 10, 11, and almost 12, 13, 15, 16, and 18. You definitely wanna grab a rope and practice this if you're ever gonna trust your life to it. And as soon as you figure out kind of just how those two overhands interlink together, you can wrap it four times around your hand, reach underneath, grab the two middle strands, go under like you would be, I don't know, tying an alpine butterfly. And what you have here, if you dress it properly, nope, that's interlinked. And if you dress it properly, <laughs> they're not interlinked. And let me show you one more trick on how to tie it. Another use for the alpine butterfly is if you have a double rope rappel here and you want to isolate one strand because let's say I don't have an ATC, I only have a Grigri with me, but my partner does. So I wanna be able to go down one strand is you can put your thumb down, lift your hand up, twist it one more time, and you can see that's the hole we're gonna to wanna to go through. So I give myself a little slack, come behind, and I go through that hole, and you have a, a double alpine butterfly here. And so you can actually clip these for personal anchor as you clip in, and you can use this to have two people go down at the same time. This is known as a twin static system in our Canyon Rope Systems course. Again, I put a loop of rope in my hand like that. And then I'm going to flip my hand over, flipping the loop of rope towards the inside, towards my arm. 
and then the two strands are still going down the pitch will create a loop like that. So I should have something that looks like this and I can adjust the length of this at this point. Once I have enough rope here for the size loops that I want, I'm gonna grab those loops through that hole and set this down nice and snug. Which doesn't allow for any indirect rescue, but it's for in a climbing scenario like I would be doing here, this is pretty freaking awesome. But uh, it's also easy to untie for the last person who's gonna come down and put their ATC on this to come down. Now don't get all knotted up about the tiny details of the Alpine butterfly. Just make sure that you're tying it correctly and know that it's super good enough if you do. It's more important that you go out and actually do something with it. That is fun. Whatever gets your rocks off. Now this thing has had more name changes than I can remember. And so I'm proposing one final name change of what it actually looks like. The phallic knot. And if you tie it a little bit too big, it becomes the flaccid knot. Anyways. My belayer is in the shade. <laughs> Andrea, off belay. Belay is off.